Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first meeting of our new council. And I am Beth Day, and I'd like to thank you for sending this group of people to represent you in moving Grand Bay Westfield forward. I first like to welcome John Bailman's back. And then we have something rather unusual. We have four new members at the table. We've only ever had two or one in the past. So I would like to welcome Councillor Jim Balkum, Councillor Stephanie McIntosh Lawrence. Did I see that right? Okay, good. Our Deputy Mayor. It's nice to see a lady in the place. And that's Aaron Tool. And then we have the second mayor for our community. And you're gonna see a lot of changes. And I think you will be very happy, like I am, with our new mayor, Brittany Mayor, Mayor Phil. I'm nervous, sorry. <laughs> so welcome, and you're gonna see a lot of changes, a lot of different things. We're thinking outside the box. So come along with us for the journey. Thank you, Councillor Day. Let the regular council meeting for the town of Grand Bay Westfield for Monday, June 14th, come to order at 7.02 p.m. Record of attendance. Let the record reflect that we have a full roster of councillors present. And I would also like to call attention to the fact that we have our leadership present for the first time in the history of Grand Bay Westfield council meetings. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Item three, approval of the order of, oh, you know what, one moment. I, I forgot something important because I got ahead of myself. Another first is that uh, we're going to do a land acknowledgement. So we respectfully acknowledge that Grand Bay Westfield exists on the traditional Wulstokwe land. The lands of Wabanaki people are recognized in a series of peace and friendship treaties to establish an ongoing relationship of peace, friendship, and mutual respect between equal nations. The river that runs by our town is known as Wulustuk, also known as the St. John River, along which lives Wulustuk Wake, the people of the beautiful and bountiful river. We, the staff and elected representatives, pay respect to the elders past and present and descendants of this land. I'd like to start the meeting off with some remarks. So welcome, friends, neighbors, to your new council. Saturday evening, I wrote a Facebook post reflecting on the whirlwind that was the past week. After I wrote it, I looked it over and realized it was probably a model for what the next four years would look like. Learning, working as a team, priority setting, communicating with the media, meetings and more meetings, and a ton of emails, building relationships, visiting with community members, and having the privilege of being part of special moments. There was a lot of doing. The days were full, and we moved from one thing to another at speed, because a town like ours has a lot going on. What wasn't expressed in my list, not directly anyhow, was how I felt about doing all these things. During every meeting and every phone call, I was gripped not just by my enthusiasm, but by our council's enthusiasm and the leadership teams. I mean, look at them, they're here in the evening. Um, enthusiasm for the work that we are about to do together. The energy of that enthusiasm left me at home in the evening with my own family with a deep sense of hope about what's next for our community. I know our friends and neighbors in Grand Bay Westfield are watching. After all, we have new leadership at the council table for the first time in a generation. You are all undoubtedly asking, where will this new council take us? I've been saying for a while how much I can't wait to get started on the journey, and last week we did exactly that. It would be very easy to get caught up in our to-do list to get swept away with the busyness of daily effort. But this council and this leadership team knows our work must be proactive, focused, and results-based, because that is how we deploy our financial and human resources in the most effective fashion. First, I would like to thank the outgoing council for the investment in our success. 
they allocated money for our orientation, which felt more like boot camp, in our initial strategic planning sessions. So to the members that are here today, thank you for that. After an extensive briefing on governance, town functions, current issues, and the latest reports and data, our first order of business was to carve out time to decide on our vision and the strategic priorities that flow from that place and the key results that we're after. That's how we will answer that all important question you, our friends, family and neighbors are rightly asking. So where will this new council take us? Let's start with our vision. This is still a work in progress, but the ideas and concepts that bubble to the surface in our discussion are all closely aligned with our new tagline, neighbors by nature. But they were also aspirational, something we will need to work towards. So here's a quick summary of, North Star Com of the North Star concepts that dominated the discussion. Number one, we will work toward a Grand Bay Westfield that builds on what we have while retaining our small town field. And two, we will prioritize openness and diversity, seek solutions that create abundancy and balanced growth, and be known as a values-driven destination for wellness and well-being that gives visitors and residents alike the ability to experience all that our community has to offer as fully as possible. To make this vision a reality, your council is considering four strategic priorities. Population growth to achieve financial sustainability, organizational capacity, infrastructure of sustainability and climate adaptation, and community vitality. This is not a small list for four years, but your council and your leadership team are aligned on these items, intentional in our focus, and not just ready, but enthusiastic about getting to work. I'm so impressed and I'm so grateful for the teamwork and, dedicated and dedication expressed by this council and leadership team. And I'm hopeful for the momentum that will propel us as we tackle these important projects. In closing, I'd like to talk a moment about values. In our planning session, we discussed the importance of justice, community, courage, inclusion, trust, and openness. In our vision, we talked about being a values-driven destination for wellness and well-being. This is a piece of what it means to be neighbors by nature that is close to my heart. I was devastated to hear about the terrible events in London, Ontario the week before last. And as I reflected on this hate-driven attack on a Muslim family, I realized there can be no growth when the conditions that cause events like this are allowed to fester. Let's have a moment of silence to reflect and to mourn for the Afzal family and their community. Thank you. Grabby Westfield is a town where everyone is welcome. Thank you. And now, tonight's business. Okay, so approval item three, approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. Motion to adopt is presented. Second. Second. On the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Your motion is carried. Item number four, conflict of interest. Is there any? There being none. Item five, public hearings. Are there any? There being none. Item six, public presentations. Item 6.1. RCMP Merrill Report Presentation, Julie Rogers Marsh. Good evening, everybody. Just want to say welcome, the counselors, Mayor, welcome. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, so, a couple of things I just wanted to touch on before we look at um, the stats for the month of May. Um, we did find our missing guy the other day, which was 
Great. Right. So, <laughs> I just want to thank um, the fire department for their help, and um, I know the town helped with opening some of the bathrooms for the Grand Search and Rescue workers, which was great. So little little things kind of help us. Um, so it was a good good news story. He's doing well, actually. I checked on him today, so he's, he's doing well. Um, the other thing I just wanted to talk about a little bit is I know the last meeting. I know mostly every meeting we talk about ATVs and some of the issues that we have in the community. Um, we did talk a little bit the last meeting about um, some of the reckless driving, speeding on the roads, and that's kind of our main focus is some of that dangerous driving. Um, it doesn't mean that we're not going to focus on those that are still driving on the road slowly. But it's not a free pass for anybody by any means. So I just want to make sure I wanted to clarify that, that Driving on the road is illegal. We will be focusing our efforts as we continue into the summer, um, but we encourage people to provide information if they have any. Um, that certainly helps us. Uh, any questions regarding the stats for May? Is there anything sticking out in your mind that we should be aware of? So I, I see that some of the Motor Vehicle Act traffic tickets is low for May. Um, so I, I need to double check the statistics for that because I think we're missing missing some. I have some people that are out um, for a couple of weeks. So I had some somebody else kind of do the report. So that's just something that stuck out to me was it's not our it's not our norm. I haven't been driving lately. Okay. <laughs> that could be one. <laughs> I, I have a quick question. In situations like where we have the, the missing man, yes. what kind of communication is standard between the RCMP detachment and uh, the town of Grand Bay Westfield and Mary Council so that we are informed in real time as to what's going on? Um, so I would encourage you guys to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That, that would be the most accurate information. Um, sometimes it's hard for us because we're in the middle of it trying to deal with resources and, and, and tips that are coming in. So that's kind of what we need to focus on. But as far as um, keeping everybody informed, I would encourage you guys to follow us on Facebook and Twitter because that's going to be the most um, current information. I guess there's no current, like, you know, um, you know, between you and the CAO, you know, this is what's going on so that uh, leadership knows. No. Um, but we can we can certainly have that discussion to see um, you know every situation is different so um, I guess we, we can we can chat about it moving forward what that would look like um, for for us it's it's important to kind of get that information out to the public to, to get those those tips in um, and also it's I mean this was we had a lot of resources to, to manage so. Um, but moving forward, absolutely, like we can certainly work together on providing some, some of that information. Any other questions? I wish you all a very good evening. Thanks very much. Appreciate your, your support and your report. I will see you next time for our terms. Thank you very much. They have a motion to receive and file. I so move. They have a seconder. Okay. And on the question, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Your motion is carried. Item seven minutes, 7.1, regular meeting, May 25th, 2021. Do I have a, a motion to adopt as presented? So moved. And do I have a seconder? Second. So that's Councillor Day moved and Councillor McIntosh Lawrence second. Any questions on the motion? Okay. There being none on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Your item 7.1 motion is carried. Yes. I think it might be important to know for people who may be watching. That the reason council can't adopt the minutes in the supplement is because it's the office that continues to sign the people. Okay, that's just, a, just as an FYI. Oh, that's a good point, John. Yes, it's not it's not 
you know, um, a certain person, it's the office. So whether it's uh, me or it's Marilyn Scherf, it's the office that's important. Thank you. Item 7.2, age-friendly committee meeting minutes of May 6, 2021. We have a motion to receive and file. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Toole. We have a second? Second. We got three seconds. <laughs> Just some enthusiasm here around the table. Okay, so, and uh, so on the, uh, on the motion, do we have any questions? Yes, I'd like to uh, inform the community that we are looking for members for the Age Friendly uh, Committee. So if there is anyone out there that would like to join us, um, you can see the application and everything on the website. And you have received in your mailbox information as well. So we're really needing some members of the uh, uh, community and it's really, really important that we get at a huge different diverse committee. So we're dealing with what's impacting on the aged in our community. Thank you, Councillor Day. Do we have any more discussion on the motion? Okay. On the, uh, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded, your motion is passed. Item eight, bills for payment. Make a motion that we pay the bills for your payment as presented in the amount of 175,930 and 23 cents. We have a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Bailmans. We have any questions or discussions on the bills for payment? I have a question. Yes, uh, number three, the splash pad. Is that cost, is that for new equipment or is that the yearly operating cost? So, yeah, please, please. Uh, the ABC Recreation installed new sprinklers, and it's my understanding to the recreation director that uh, sprinklers were added to the sprinkler park. Do you want me more specific? Yeah, so, uh, your worship, when the uh, splash pad was built, it was designed to allow for future uh, sprayers on the spot pad. Right. So what you're seeing in that cost is adding one of the future sprayers on um, that spot pad. Okay, thank you. And we're opening splash pad early this year. Are we here? We opened it, it opened today. today. Yes. That's, that's very exciting. A little bit early for, uh, for all the kids out there. But how much does it cost per week to run the splash pad? Per week to run the splash pad, we operate 98 days, um, 10 hours a day. Including the cost of the service of the plant, insurance, cleaning the washrooms, changing rooms in the power, and weekly cost is estimated at $1,565. $1,565 a week. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Thank you very much, Gary. We have any more questions on the bills for payment? I have a question, number seven. Something with the city of Moncton and Webner? Yeah, so uh, Troy, WCA, Cole, and myself attended that webinar hosted by the City of Moncton, uh, which featured George Cuff as a speaker. And he, I think this is the week before we had an orientation, it was on council orientation. Oh! <laughs> and what to do and not do. Yeah, happy to report from our perspective and as the leadership team that we think we did it. And the rest, and I'll leave up the council the field as the council or the orientation was worth it. <laughs> so, but no, it was good. It just occurred for us at the top of the road. Good. Thank you, John. Any, but, any other questions on the bills for payment? I have a question about 46, the 46. Novacom, the radios. I'm assuming those are for staff. And is that cost for the whole year or new radios? So I'm going to turn that over to the chief. That's actually a fire department expense. Okay. And that's more of a new technology, but he'll speak to that. Uh, so yes, those were the one portion of a capital project um, that we're finalizing this year on a switch from a conventional VHF radio system to the New Brunswick Truck Mobile Radio System. Uh, that, uh, so that was one part of the purchase. Uh, the portable radios arrived last week, so we'll see that on a future bill for payment. And then there's 
one other component. So it, it may show up as one or two more bills, um, but that's part of that capital purchase. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Councillor McIntosh Lawrence, you, you, if you have more, you go. Yeah. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Uh, number 50, about the street sweeping. I'm just assuming that the that contracting it out is cheaper than owning our own street sweeper and doing it ourselves. I really don't know what the right answer is for that. Uh, I would encourage council that maybe we should do a better review. Uh, a few years ago, I was part of a process that purchased a new street sweeper. Uh, it cost six figures. I think it was about 25, 150. I may be wrong. It's been a few years. Uh, but there's a number of calculations that go into it. Um, the drawback with contracting it is they come at the beginning of the year, and we really can't do a whole lot more after that. There's two sweepers. I think they're for a week, if I recall correctly. And uh, anyway, yeah. And uh, so they do about 103 plane kilometers of cleaning to take a little bit. Uh, the drawback with this system is, you know, for example, uh, we can't clean up the sidewalks. We can't clean up messy streets because somebody's been driving in out of mud. Uh, like you may see on the air that says they're cleaning up being meant uh, clean fill or something. Or bike lanes. Uh, it's not like a best cycle on River Valley and the Arpist. They get pretty dirty sometimes. And I wonder how stable it is to have to stop something or something. Yeah. Uh, so there's some pros and cons with the way that's done. Uh, right now, can't really say which is the most cost effective. This is why it's always been done here. But I do think that we should bring this up to review and see if this is what we should achieve doing. John, is there some opportunity to use the, the little sidewalk sweeper to do maybe the bike lane areas along River Valley Drive or some of the more high traffic areas? Well, I think I'm going to direct that to the works commissioner. Yes, we, we do use that. We do have a room attached attach on the trackers. And we use that, I guess, early spring to take our sand off of the sidewalk, put it out to the road so, so the street sweepers can come in and pick it up along the gutter line. It's difficult to do a bike lane with a curve because you're just moving the sand in up against the curb. That's really not, not good. But where there's no curb and there's just a shoulder, yes, we are able to go by and then room it off. Uh, yeah, I got the shoulder. But up against the curb or not, but if there's no curb, we are able to get it off. So, so I just wanted to, to, to make a point too that that, uh, that cost for the street sweeping, that 272507 is is simply to get rid of the winter sand. On it. So it's like a one-time one-time thing. So it's, it's costly to, to sweep the streets, for sure. I didn't realize that before I got this report, but we know now. That's it. I have two more. No, don't apologize. I've got some too. Um, 73 and 74, the lawn care. Um, I'm wondering if we have summer students that could do this, or is that is the job too extensive? Um. Well, again, I want to put that into the category. Let's take a look at this. Um, other municipalities have their own staff who do this. Uh, this particular municipality uh, contracts it out. Uh, I believe this comes under the recreation department. And uh, I know speak to providing good care of it. If uh, Gary wants to speak to that a little bit more, I'll let him know. Yeah, so we're working right now. Um, the recreation department is not at the capacity with uh, equipment, tools, um, training, uh, suits, tractors, vehicles that are supplied by contractors. Um, so we don't have the capacity at this point. But again, like uh, other items that could be reviewed as to whether it could be a cost of potential for future use. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. The weed man. I'm just wondering if the fertilizer is eco-friendly. Yeah, dogs and other pets and people can walk around them. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor McIntosh. Do we have any other questions on the bills for payment? I just wanted to, to highlight um, the uh, I think it's item number 47 parent uh, floor sanding um, we just uh, refinished the, the floors at uh, Brundage Point um, the money was kept in the community that's a, a local a local person so um, that's very exciting um, John can you speak to a little bit about the job and and how um, it 
they, we used a little bit of uh, like a new finish so it'll last a little bit longer. What's the theory? And uh, so the uh, course for last time in 2015, the expectation was that it would have lasted longer than five or six years. Uh, so they were sanded down the game, a different finish was applied, and there'll be yet another finish put on next year. And uh, then periodically after that, um, again, theory, uh, this finish should last for 15 to 20 years if it's properly maintained. But again, it depends. Right. You know, what type of use is, is going on in there? You know, if you have someone who's doing a soft and calm uh, invitation, you know, that could be honest as well, right? So. Okay. Thank, thank you, John. Do we have any other questions or discussion on the bills for payment? No? Okay. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Okay, your motion is carried. Um, item number nine, consent agenda. Number one, Grand Bay Westfield Volunteer Fire Rescue Department report. Number two, building inspectors report. Number three, dog control report. Four, works department report. Five, capital projects tracking sheet. Six, river center coordinators report. Seven, recreation department report. Eight, seniors resource center report. Can I have a motion? Motion to receive a call. Second. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Tool. Thank you very much. There's um, a lot of reports here, and we have Vino and New Council with lots of questions. Mm -hmm. So um, I think maybe we'll go through the reports one by one to make sure that uh, everybody has an opportunity to ask their, their questions. So we'll start with the, uh, the Fire Rescue Department report. Um, do we have any questions for our fire chief? on the report. Um, I just wanted to highlight um, some of the numbers I saw in the report that there were, and Troy, correct me if I'm wrong, 618 shifts with 3,708 coverage hours. Do I have that right? Uh, yes. That seems, that seems like a huge, a huge number of hours. How would that compare to, say, the St. John Fire Department in terms of coverage hours? Honestly, I'd have to find out for sure. Um, they would certainly have a larger number on staff, and of course, it, yeah. the main difference being is when they're on shift, they're actually in the stations right. um, and providing direct coverage right at the station. Our shifts are basically a commitment of being on call, and that the fire fighter is remaining in the community and immediately available to respond to a call. We generally try to have at least four or an engine company right. um, that would be on shift at any given time. Um, but there is room for up to six to sign up. Yeah. I noticed you have a, a lot of training hours too. Was it, was it 388 plus training hours? Like that? For the month, yes. Uh, that would make sense. The, um, so the current training is on a weekly basis, um, just part of the regular, regular everyday training. Um, currently with COVID, that is now being split over two nights uh, per week, so Monday, Tuesday evenings. Uh, there's one for each one. Uh, and then, additionally, that might be included in that section of the report would include uh, the week, uh, weekend course for Firefighter One, uh, Medical First Responder, CCR Research, Hazmat Training, any of specialty type courses. Um, would be in addition to that as well. Yeah, it speaks to a large amount of dedication from, from your firefighters. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's really that's really great. Thank, thank you very much, Troy. Um, Building inspectors report. Uh, do we have any questions about that? I have a question, just curiosity. Um, I see there are a couple of new builds and one with septic. Do, the, do all the new builds have access to sewerage or no? Um, there are places where there isn't sewer available. Okay. And so as long as they're one acre in size, uh, they can uh, get septic. There are areas where a septic or a sanitary sewer may be available, but the law provides the location that the house is more than 60 meters away from the main, and that exempts them from connecting to the main. So, so Emma, Emma Avenue, did 
Do they have access to sewage? Yes, there is sewer on the, the road. But they don't have to. But they're almost 200 meters away from it. So they Okay. And is the revenue collected as a re on the revenue report? Is it strictly from building permits? On the report, yeah. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. It should be noted that uh, to the development officer, there's also uh, other revenue that's collected as well for the report. It's just, just. I'd like to make a comment about the uh, value of new home starts. Yes. yes. Um, especially yes. after. COVID year last year, um, we're up to 22,877,162, whereas this time last year, we had $2,063,475. So although those numbers may not look like they're significant, they are. And uh, I'd like to thank those who are coming to our community and building homes. Good news. Yeah, it is. That's a, that's a good news story, for sure. Do you have any more questions for David? No. Okay. Uh, dog control report. Any questions on the dog control report? Um, works department summary. Do we have any questions for the works department? I just have a comment. It just looks like uh, all the work, it, it just uh, floating docks, park benches, winter sand from roadways. That just uh, does all sides of summer. <laughs> That's a good news story right there. Uh, capital projects tracking sheet. We have any um, comments or discussion on questions? Uh, if nobody has any, I, I would, uh, John, would you mind speaking a little bit on the Colonel Nace Water Exploration Project? Sure. Uh, actually, I have a, not another meeting tomorrow morning with my um, which is a federally funded agency that provides grants and resources to partners such as us. And what they do is they provide a graduate student to help out with the study that we may need to do. In this case, um, we're looking at water security and sustainability. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's that's exactly what I wanted to. Know. Uh, then we're move on to the River Center Coordinators Report. Any questions there? It's nice to see people who are I'm hopefully getting their shots and starting to get somewhat back to normal. And I see there's a lot of weddings and parties and showers and all kinds of things, and that's a good news. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's good to see that sort of we're starting get, starting to get back to a semblance of normal. So that's that's great. Any more questions? I just have an observation. I'm just wondering if all the events scheduled there, if they're on a town calendar somewhere, or if that happens already. Or, John, can you speak to that? Yes. Um, once events are finalized, they are placed on the calendar. Uh, events that you know, she is working on, uh, it has to be booked, it'll make it on the calendar. They are available for observation. I don't know the year we uh, but yeah. And then also, just for Council's information, uh, it's kind of odd to compare two anomalous years like we've had in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Um, you know, we are looking at including 2019 in future reports. However, um, how you compare apples and oranges and pears is really what we're looking at. Uh, you know, if we're successful in getting a partial reopening this year, uh, 21 won't look like 20, but it won't look like 19 either. In some of the studies that I've read, they talked about either a U-shaped recovery or a shaped recovery. Uh, it's a little bit out of the box. You know, suggest we have a combination where it'll be kind of, you know, we've gone down, we're going to come up, it's going to be kind of jagged if you want to put that way. So, we are looking at clue in 2019, but I don't know how fair of a comparison is for what the picture would be uh, for council, especially when, uh, you know, we are taking a look at being a little bit more aggressive and trying to book, for an example, the River Center in the future. Right. Thank you, John, but you're right, kind of, Hard to compare those numbers, but including 2019, we'll 
at least give us an idea because 2020 numbers were, are fairly meaningless for purposes of comparison. So, so um, that wasn't a criticism. It was just like because 2020 was, uh, you know, yeah, nobody did. Yeah, it was just completely anomalous here. So uh, on to the Recreation Department report. Do we have any questions for Bruce, uh, for uh, Gary? Gary, it looks like you're getting off light here tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, number eight, we have the Seniors Resource Center report. Um, do we have any uh, questions? Comments, discussions on that? Your Worship. Yes. I'd just like to bring the Council's attention to the contract position uh, finished last month. Yes. And um, you know, we're probably going to resume operations the way they were pre COVID, I believe. Okay. Um, I think Gary knows a little bit more about it than I do. You can just speak to that just to keep it. Yeah, yeah so uh, the Senior Resource Center coordinator, Tommy uh, McFish, her last day then uh, was on the uh, 28th, and we'll be reverting back to uh, opening and closing the facility and for each of the facility supervisors in the absence of the seniors. Uh, so we're back to um, the way we operated prior to the uh, temporary part time position. Okay. And uh, I assume that that's, that'll be one of the priorities that's looked at when we get the uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Um, results back. So, okay. So, I wonder if you want to be able to let everybody know about when the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is. We're aware that it went out when it's going to be coming back. We're not here about that. Yes, John, can you speak to that? Sorry, what? When we'll be talking about the, the survey that went out for recreation. Okay, so the survey uh, the final number was 339 uh, respondents for the 95% confidence level, which is fine to work with. It should, you know, adequately address the concerns we have both within the region and in the town. The um, survey is closing today, I believe, and then they're going to be connected to the next week or two. Uh, we should be getting a draft report in July, and then uh, there'll be a final report in August for council's consideration. So they're on track in short, but uh, you know, it's supposed to be finished. I can't remember if it's supposed to be finished when I write this right now, but we're getting a report by the Celestia. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, dissipated. Yes, for sure. We need to thank everyone who took the time to do the survey. I know it was a, a longer survey, but we had a lot of data that needed to be captured in order for us to make really informed decisions and for the, the plan to be as comprehensive as possible. Correct. Um, could you just remind? Uh, leaders of groups who received the survey and who haven't completed the survey, that they please take the time to do this because this is going to inform our decision making for the next 10 years. And it'd be a shame if a group came back to us and said, Well, what about us? And we said, Well, where's the information? So if we just, if we just remind people. Yes, please. If you're a group and you've received an email and a link from uh, Gary Clark, our recreation director, please take the time to do the survey. I think we sent out 40 to 40 It was around 40 and we received 25. Yeah, so we've received only 25 back. So we really, really need you and your organization to take the time and sit down and do it. It's, uh, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most, but it's, it's crucial for our future and for the future of your group so that we know we can capture, you know, your priorities as well. Okay. So if, uh, if that is all the discussion on the consent agenda, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Your item nine is passed. Item 10, business arising from minutes. There being none, item 11, delegations. There being none, item 12, petitions. There being none, we'll move on to item 13, bylaws. There being none, we'll move on to 14, notice of motions. There being none, we are on to item 15, reports. Item 15.1, signing officers. 
make a motion that the town of Diamond Bay Westfield appoint any two, one appointed, one elected, of the following persons to sign checks on behalf of the town and to appoint the following persons as signing authorities for all banking and other documents on behalf of the town. Mayor Brittany Muirfield, Deputy Mayor Aaron Toole, and Councillor James Fulton. And John Ennis Glynn, CAO, Clerk Treasurer, and Marcia Mason, Assistant Clerk Treasurer. Do we have a second? Second. Councillor Bailiff, thank you. Any questions or discussions on the motion? There being none on the question, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? No, I just want to bring your council's attention that you have spoken to the council's outcome about the exercise of yes. the yes. place how it is set up. Yes, thank you. Yes, we did ask Councillor Dalton if, if he would be willing to do that, and graciously he agreed. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, John. So, contrary minded? All right, your motion is carried. Item 15 2, designated highway five year capital plan. I have a motion that the council of the town of Brandon Westfield adopt the attached five year designated highway plan and forward plan to Mr. Joe Green and copy the local district engineer. Do we have a second? Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Tool. Do we have any questions on the motion? Any discussion? Your Worship, this past year we only received $15,000 for work on the designated highway. My hope, my prayer, and we need to get this to our MLA as well, mm -hmm. so he knows what we're looking for. I just hope the province comes because there is extensive work that is required for that road for the next five years. Yes. And so I, my hope is that we will get some of the money or parts of the money set different times or we get the whole works. Yeah. And um, I would also encourage you, Your Worship, to um, plan to meet with uh, Jill Green, the Minister of Transportation, with our MLA. Noted. Thank you. That's that's definitely a good idea and in the plans. And I just wanted to note that we requested funding of five hundred and forty thousand dollars in twenty twenty one, and of that request, we received fifteen thousand. So, as a result, our priority list is not expanded beyond last year. So, uh, you're right, uh, Councillor Day. We do need to discuss how we can get more money from the province to maintain uh, our municipal highway, which is. River Valley Drive and Nerepis Road. So um, our share of the cost is supposed to be 19.1%. And uh, and just uh, for everyone's education, that that's just for the road. The province does not pay for sidewalks at all. So, um, and what happens when the province denies our request? That's it, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion on the motion? John, is there anything you'd like to speak to? Well, I'd just like to point out to Council that um, in this year you didn't really get an opportunity to work at the asset management plan. Uh, it's a rolling, uh, sort of for this five year capital plan. It's a rolling five year plan. Uh, as the mayor said, has it really changed from last year's five year version to this year's five year version? Uh, but I would like to say that there is an opportunity for Council to tweak this in the future. And uh, the works commissioners. Uh, you know, alluded to the fact that you know, if, if we want a more active population, we want safer biking as an example. Um, you know, we can work with highways. Doesn't mean they're going to agree with our request, uh, but that is possible. And I'd also like to point out, the Council, that if you look at the Works Commissioner's desk, he has, I think, a too much binder there, and uh, that's the regulations that govern how we work together on the highway. Wow. And, I have used the you know metaphor in the past that if you go back to the movie Thor, you know, there's that scene where the guy comes out and says, I have a boot and you're the ant. Uh, in provincial municipal relations, we're the ant and you're the boot. Yeah. The truth will well, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be a tougher ant. 
<laughs> or at least, or at least our yeah, there we go. That, that, would, that would work. Yes. It's just my comments. Not so much a question, but just this has been a really eye opening and good experience as a council member to be able to look and see what the plan is going forward. And we have great roads and we have they're upkeep up kept really well. And when you take a look, you can really see the plan and you can really see how it goes. So I do encourage people to take a look at these types of documents because it really does inform you as to what's going on around you. And it's, uh, it's quite telling. And I do like the fact that there was a like Kerr mentioned in these cases. <laughs> <laughs> so just for clarity for some residents, there is a plan to address a lack of shoulder sidewalk past the flashing lights to the Britain Road. John? Sorry. Not explicitly, that's something that was kind of to that council can tweak this in the future. Um, and again, that depends on the cooperation if I'm correct with DTI. I'll let our works commission to speak more to that. Yeah, and this list, and again, uh, it's more, probably more of a, a, a terminology is that this list, I guess, back in the day, is it was the five year designated highway capital plan. So these lists are, are capital approved, yeah. not maintenance. So uh, I'll give this money and the example that we only received 15000 this year, that was for a capital project, but we still have to fund the maintenance. So all the street sweeping, the line painting, everything on their bottle patching. That's all funded through the, the town. Now they do give us some money, not enough to cover our, our costs. So depending on, on how you wish to, to set this list, I'll say for next year, if this one is adopted, that, that could be at the priority of council is where you wish to go for capital improvements. Thank you, Bruce. Do we have any more questions or comments on, on the item? There being none, all of the question, all in favor? Uh, Contrary minded? Your motion is passed. 15.3 Works Garage Roofing. Yes, I just to make a motion that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield authorize the CAO and Mayor to enter into an agreement with Ryan Bishop's Roofing to reshingle the roof for a sum not exceeding $5,200 excluding taxes. That the remaining funds in the budget budget line be available for roof repairs should deficiencies be found as the roof is repaired. Second. We have a second. Councilor Bailman's, thank you very much. Do we have any questions or comments or discussion on the item? I just would like to point out that the roofing has only been changed once in 35 years, so I think it's probably past due. Um, I saw the pictures in the, in the report groups, and uh, that's really all I need to see. It's like, yeah. John, do you have anything to add? No? No, there's uh, money allocated in case we come across a lot underneath the shields and the Okay, and that's budgeted for already? Yeah. Thank you. We have any other questions on that item? There being none, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Your motion is passed. The item is 15.4, and that is trickling filter plant water wheel. For sure. I move that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield authorize administration to purchase and make the necessary repairs to the 25 McLean Road trickling filter plant with any subsequent deficit to be made whole through the use of the sewer capital reserve. Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Bell and Councillor Day. Do we have any questions or discussion on the item? Any questions? I have a, an observation. Um, so the, the cost for the replacement is uh, 5700 plus HST. Um, I guess my question is, why is uh, such a low cost item coming to council? Well, the same thing with roofing walls, I also say. Uh, this one is the uh, spending authority that I have at CAO for is at $5,000. So, roofing, we just brought to you as a free information item, but in the future, I don't like that probably would come to you unless it goes over budget. But this one, I just don't have the spending authority to do it. What do comparable municipalities in our area uh, do in terms of a procurement policy limit? Um, depends on the size, but typically 10, 15, some go up to 25. Um, 
I think it's reasonable that uh, we ask staff to take a look at a procurement policy that is that is reasonable um, and maybe change that. I think that you know it's it's better use of council's time to be looking at the bigger dollar items and and the CAO um, has the authority to handle the smaller dollar items. Um, can we have a report for that? Um, for the, which, which one of the July meetings do you think would be reasonable to get that kind of report done? Um, actually, a few more can still do it in August. In August? I haven't looked at any holidays yet. <laughs> okay. And uh, we still have uh, parts of our capacity plan coming in. Uh, we still have strategic plan work to do. Uh, those are big items as well, plus the day to day stuff. Okay. Um, we also have another report due at the end of the month for the province. So we could defer until August at the last draft. Yes, no, that's that's completely fine with me, Council. I would suggest making it for the first meeting in September just to give you some leeway because you don't know and I don't know what could end up on your desk between now and the last year. Yeah. Do you have a limit on it? Is there a limit on it? Yeah, right now, what is the limit now, Don? 5,000. 5,000. So anything over 5,000 has to come before Council. Uh, and, yeah, to, to make that higher. So we're asking John to take a look at a policy that will increase that level based on what is standard operating procedure and best practices in similar municipalities around the area. And that'll give him a little bit more freedom to make these decisions as long as they're, if they're in the budget or, you know, not in the budget, well, that would be just budget items, wouldn't it? This is not budget. Non budget, yes, because it was a. Um, this is an emergency. Yeah. 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 So, so John, we're not like making the change right now, but we're asking John to come back with some recommendations for a policy. You go with that. Do we need a motion for that, John, or is it just That's a direction? It's a direction. I'll bring it back to council in September. Thank you. Do we have any more questions about the trickling filter water plant wheel? There being none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Your motion, 15.4, is carried. Out of 15.5, uh, Douglas Estate Subdivision Development Incentive Grants. Motion that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield approve this agreement in principle between the Town of Grand Bay Westfield and JPW Holdings for a multi parcel grant under the Town's Development Incentive Program with the creation of four new vacant building lots located on Shannon Road out of the current PID number 30331656. Four individual grants will be paid up to a maximum of five annual installments for the vacant lots. Grants end if the lots are issued a permit for development or sold. Once the lots have a property assessment value established by Service New Brunswick, a memorandum of understanding be completed for disbursement of grant funds based on annual confirmation of payment of taxes owing. Thank you, Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Day. Do we have any discussion or questions on the motion? I just uh, more to, I noted in the background that this grant has been used before. So I could just a bit of information on how many times it's been used and how, how long this incentive has been here. The incentive program was adopted in at the end of 2019, we had an application for the development uh, grant. There's, there's four different parts to it, and that one didn't carry forward to completion. Um, we have had one other application for this type of grant for a big box. So it's not in place yet. Again, it's a principle. Uh, once the lots are registered and assessment comes in at the end of the year, we know what it is for them. Thank you, David. We have any other questions on the motion? I, I, have a quick, I just have a quick sort of procedural question. Just in the interest of reducing red tape for developers, I'm just wondering why. Um, this is coming to council if the project already meets criteria already established and passed by council. Well, the, the, 
to talk to my council with the specific reference of bringing it to council. Uh, the, this grant it gives me way for council to actually set the amount at the time of the assessed value. And uh, having the council, at least with the agreement in principle, it gives the developer that confidence that they've got moving forward with the project, they know that their that funding is, is going to be part of that over this space. Thank you, David. John? Um, because, it is a council, because it is a council um, bylaw, this council, if they want to expedite things, can change it. Okay. You know, with the assurance that an administration is following the criteria set up. Okay. But that would require significant amendment. Okay, so is that something that staff can look into? Is it uh, is, I mean, do we want to bring this back for discussion another time? I'm not sure what the procedure is on that. Yeah, you can ask us to bring it back and we'll you know, amend it so that, um, you know, that there's the final amounts. Uh, and that uh, you know, we have certitude from the council on what is uh, acceptable. And then the moment also can process it directly. Um, then the other question as well. Is we wanted to provide incentives to developers. Um, you know, there's merit to it, uh, especially when they have a number of vacant lots and don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but also, you know, incentives disincentivize people from developing because what it allows them to do is treat it as a land bank so that they get a discounted uh, property to carry for a while until something negative can happen or not happen. If there's no incentives, then there's pressure on them to develop sooner than later. So there's pros and cons that we need to consider with these incentives programs in order to achieve what we want to achieve. With this program, we don't have enough data to say if it is doing what we want it to do. Because um, it's adopted at the end of 19, we into the 2020, things kind of step sideways. And, uh, but that's something we can look into. And I probably prepared to talk to some stakeholders about whether or not it's something that uh, they need. And at the end of the day, too, if the business or developer needs tax incentives to be successful, uh, what's the long term prognosis for that business? Is that a business that we really want here or a development that we really want here? Because if we may end up with shell homes or something like that, because there are communities in Canada and once they've had good incentives for development, and yet there's been no when there to buy the homes. And so they end up city guarantee. You have subsurface and surface infrastructure, which is not being used in Cromwell. Uh, so but those are related questions, uh, but we can certainly look into it for the council. I just want to warn you, we don't have data specific to Grand Bay Westville about this area. Okay. Thank you. Council Bell, do you have any questions? No. Okay. All right. So, um, on that, we can refer that question further for more information. Um, if there are no further questions on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Your motion is carried. Item 15.6 Local Government Reform. Trying to pull up that second letter. Bear with me here. I believe this is an item for discussion. So, yeah, so I'm going to make my Because we would like to have. Uh, okay. Yes, please. Uh, for this item, uh, the previous council uh, had. A consensus on what they want to send the to as recommendations. Um, this is a new council, even though it's continuous of the old, it's new. Um, the recommendations that this council has may be similar or dissimilar. I would encourage council just to discuss them. We'll take notes and uh, we'll come back to council at the next meeting with what we understood based on this meeting uh, what your recommendations would be for local government reform. So then all the direction will be to administration to bring back the report. So the motion may be uh, that uh, administration uh, prepare a report based on the discussion 
to the Broadway Council for the next uh, Yes. So, yes. So, so we all know that the, the government has issued its green paper, vibrant and sustainable communities. Um, it's been discussing the need for local government reform. So the premise for the need for reform is basically that we need to modernize local government, government that the local governance system no longer meets the needs of the many residents. There are too many municipal entities and that almost 30% of New Brunswick residents don't have local government representation. So, so those are their premises for moving forward with this reform process. So um, uh, if I recall the history, there was a report that, uh, that John presented to council in July of 2021. Am I right on that? Uh, January, January, yeah, January. And then there was a second one in April and that uh, second letter in April was the one that was sent to Mr. Ellen with the, with the recommendation. So, um, we basically need to look at those recommendations and see if they match up with, with our priorities and, uh, you know, and, what, and how we see the reform process moving forward the best way for Grand Bay Westfield. So, uh, do we have any, uh, this is going to be one of the hallmark issues for us as a council over the next four years. So, um, I think the more discussion on this um, item from council, the better. Um, Councilor Balcom, do you have, uh, I can say, you look like you've yeah. got something to just add. Just wondering, Madam Mayor, what the, uh, what the timeline is uh, for this discussion. There's a lot of uh, background information that uh, uh, is available. We do have the letter that uh, was sent by the former council. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if if there's a target date that, uh, that your worship has in mind for um, sending a response letter from our council to the minister? Well, I think based on, on, on their timeline, I mean, uh, what is the white paper, John, supposed to be coming out? It's supposed to be in the fall. In the fall. We're still doing consultations. Uh, they have consultations lined up for the next few weeks. Uh, I would suggest uh, if they have a white paper, we want to come out in the fall, we should get a uh, response to them before July. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking as well because you know there's there's different opportunities for us here that uh, that we need to we need to consider whether it's taking on some more population dense areas or um, you know other things of that nature. Um, so there's a chance I think that the next meeting to have more information provided to us. I mean, the June 28th meeting, so I think that would be our timeline. Yes, well, yes, I think there is, um, in the package, there was a report that uh, that was actually uh, co-authored co by the son of our development officer, David Taylor, called a Representative Regionalization Toward More Equitable, Democratic, Responsible, Responsive and Efficient Local Government in New Brunswick. And uh, we, I have a question, is, is Zach Taylor also your son, or is it just John? No, he's a professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should, uh, you should be very proud. This is quite, this is quite a document. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think that uh, that the letter that we should be received and filed for further discussion, um, I mean, I would, uh, I would like to have... Uh, and I'm sure if council mm -hmm. agrees, um, I mean, I think it would be a great idea to have have uh, Zach and, you know, is it Dr. Taylor and Dr. Taylor? Dr. Taylor, Zach. Yes. And the great. Um, and you're John Taylor. Um, to present this report at the next meeting for us so that we can take this discussion further and to have our recommendations ready to send to uh, the province. Um, in time for them to be considered. So, uh, yes. Kind of confused. Uh, you're not the only one. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you for inviting uh, John Taylor, Dr. Uh, Zach Taylor. Um, that's great. Um, but I'm not sure that you're going to, you'll be for more information before discussing it tonight or. I thought I heard that on the table. I thought I heard 
um, that you know, we'll wait until after the discussion. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where you want to land on this tonight. So you mean with the, with the letter that's to go to the province? Yeah, will there be a discussion tonight about what you want, or are you thinking of postponing that until the next meeting? I know we only received the other matter relatively recently, so I, I know we all have our ideas, we've discussed it um, relatively in quite a bit of detail, but I, I do like the time. I don't think we can, no, we stop and do nothing for the next two weeks and just pick it up again. I think we, we can work on it, we can formulate our thoughts. Um, if there are any thoughts we have now, we definitely can discuss. Uh, yeah, I, I love the idea. I love from what I heard that we can have a submission from the last council and a submission from this council. So I think that just is, it adds to assist us, it assists our citizens. Um, so I think that's an excellent. Uh, well, I think, yeah. yeah, I think we can discuss the report a little bit more if, if council is, uh, is willing. And I'm just pulling it up here. So, the recommendation and, uh, is that the Council of Grand Bay Westfield accept the administrative report to inform their discussion and invite John Taylor upon whose report this is based. Sorry, I'm just trying to, uh, to go from one document to another. Okay, so I've got the, I've got the recommendations here, sorry. So, one of the one of the concepts that is different from what has been sent to the province in the past is that uh, the town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas east of the Narrabus March, including Britain Road, Campbell Road, Whitman's Point, and perhaps a little further east along Highway One Bay One Hundred Two. And a second recommendation is that the town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas east of the ferry landing that are within the urban dense settlement. And that the, Grand, the town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas south of the town and west of the St. John River, such as uh, Martinon in Morna. So the, that's uh, that's a, a fairly large departure from from uh, some of the recommendations from the letter that went the last time. So I'd like uh, I'd like some discussion from council on what they think about that change. So I know I know there were two concepts that were highlighted by our CAO. CAO. Subsidiarity and uh, regionalization. So, that could be a way we can briefly. Yes, John, can you speak to both of those for us, please? Sure. Uh, subsidiarity is really the principle that you push decision making down at the parent level as low as possible so that there's accountability and responsiveness. So, for example, uh, you know, if we picked up, say, Mark on this example. Uh, we might be able to provide better smoke clarity uh, and provide more accountability to those residents than perhaps the city could 25 kilometers, 40 kilometers away or whatever the distance is. Um, so that's really the principle, you know, that we push that down. Parks and Rec might be an example of that as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of traffic flow moves from Martin on here as an example. So that's that principle. Push decision making down as far as possible so that there's responsiveness and accountability. Regionalization is something that already uh, we're doing to a certain degree through the Fundy Regional Service Commission. And, and I should preface my remarks by saying that not all regional service commissions in the province are operating the same or as effective as one another. Uh, some are, are doing very well and providing services in parks and recreation, and some are. Um, but really what this idea is, is based on is what's happening in BC and, uh, and it's more of a voluntary thing. So for an example now, uh, in the Funding Regional Service Commission, uh, we uh, have our own development officer and he does our land use planning and permits and stuff like that. Whereas if you're in another part of the Funding Regional Service Commission, you would go to the funding office and ask and submit your permits to them. And they would do it. There is no cost to us for that. Um, however, we are part of it. You are a formal member of the board there. You can, excuse me, just make a decision making. The same thing when it comes to recycling, we have the blue bits now by Um, You know, that's something that we do. 
Now, when they moved away from that to something else, that would be another decision of council, but they can either choose to participate or not. You know, uh, same thing that happens with the uh, landfill. Uh, that's not something we participate with. So regionalization is a voluntary participation based on what we feel we can deliver or not deliver. So there's a lot of flexibility. They found that it works in D.C. Now, there are other levels of government. You know, if you go to Alberta, they have a county model where uh, a lot of that used to be funded by oil. And so that you would have a county where the typical oil wants to be, would have a significant amount of wealth generated. They could invest it into the city, for example. That's in that. Um, and uh, there was that proved difficult for a number of reasons. Then you have Ontario where it's a regional form of government. Local is local, and regional would provide healthcare. Some aspects of transportation, such as uh, you know, public transit, um, and then uh, aspects of parks and recreation. So there's different models, but based on what is currently done here through the Regional Service Commission, it seems reasonable that the regionalization model that EC offers at their residents may be something to be more suitable here, less costly to implement. It's something that we're already sort of used to doing. It's just a matter of how much of it do we actually implement. So, for example, given the partnership we have um, with uh, St. John, Chris Penn, Ross City, Hampton, uh, there may not be a whole lot of change. Whereas if you go somewhere else, there may be significant change because there's smaller municipalities with less resources and less capacity. Sorry, no, yeah. <laughs> And I think it's important to note too that uh, in, in the, there are other problems that uh, they highlighted in your report that municipal reform needs to address, and that's and and a lot of those, um, you know, are are affect a lot of a lot of municipalities in the area, like slow population growth, economic stagnation, productivity inefficiencies, aging population. And the urban and rural socioeconomic divide. So, and those are not identified in the green paper, but they are things that the municip that municipal reform needs needs to address, as well as provincial and municipal fiscal fragility. Um, and you know, and that uh, I assume that that has to do with with the grant. Um, that would be the transfer payments yeah. that come from. Uh, you know, West has taken a hit economically, so yes. there's less money flowing in Ottawa. That's actually less money flowing here. There's increased pressure on health, increased pressure, pressure on social services, which means who gets squeezed. I've already used yeah. that for a boot in the end. Right, yeah, so that, you know, that, that ends up being, that ends up being municipalities and local governments. So there's also unfair property, tax fairness, and incentives to live in LSDs. And of course, the incentives are the in the artificially low tax rate um, in the LSDs. So um, it's, you know, and there's some really good observations in here that really kind of um, focus some of the issues. It's the population of New Brunswick is 775,000, which is about the same size um, in terms of population as Mississauga, Ontario. Um, GMB has to provide services to its residents over an area of almost 73,000 square kilometers compared to Mississauga, which delivers its services over 292.4 square kilometers. So that really, that really speaks to, uh, to the challenges in terms of uh, providing services. So, um, so yes. Uh, I was pleased that this council and the, the reports, the, the focus that we're trying to take and that everybody wants us to take, I believe, is to look at re this issue of the local government's reform as an opportunity for Grand Bay Mexico, not as a threat, not as a problem, not as something to be feared, but uh, looking at solving a lot of these problems. So what we're taking a look at, what we've seen from our CEO and the reports coming in is this is an opportunity. I think we should look at this positively. Um, and your council will look at this positively to make sure that we can try to find ways to position us well. And yet we're not proposing things to government. We are setting out what Grand Bay Westfield thinks what, what our needs are, what our problems are. So that's kind of how, how these reports I feel have looked at it. So I think it's um, it's been a learning opportunity on this one too. But uh, yes, it will continue to be so. I'm quite sure. So and uh, Councillor Day, do you have anything? 
look like you have something. I would just remind everyone that even 20 some years later, the residents of Wellsford or Westfield still refer to amalgamation. So even when you do door to door in other times, it's amazing how the memories are still there and they feel like they've lost joining Grand Bay. They don't see any real benefits to it. And I guess I just don't want great ideas, great forward thinking, but I don't want people to end up, and I know there will be, some that don't see the benefit of it. Now, Martin, on in that, I see if uh, they're paying $1.75, they might jump for joy and want to join us. But then someone up the Britain Road who's only paying a dollar, not even that, might be quite upset. Yeah. So, change, some of them are going to love it. And then there's some that are going to to be changed. So... Um, I'm all for us looking forward and positioning ourselves such that we don't get out amalgamated. And because I'm not for that. However, um, we have to do what's best for this community at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, nobody's getting out of this 100% yeah. with what they want. Right. So I think it's just important to, to think regionally, you know, in terms of, of what's what's best, um, you know, in particular for, for Grand Bay Westfield, because that's who we represent. But, uh, you know, we, we, we know we're not going to get everything that we want, and we know probably St. John's not going to get everything we want. So we have to be open to new ideas and, and creative thinking and just uh, compromise. Mm-hmm. But we have to advocate hard for what we want at the table so that we make sure that our interests are represented well. Jim, you look lucky. Uh, your Worship, without a doubt, our town of Grand Bay Westfield does have to grow. I moved in here with my family. I'll never forget the day, it was the ice storm in 1998. So I really was an outsider coming in, but I really didn't know the difference between Westfield and Grand Bay. I've enjoyed living in Grand Bay Westfield uh, for the last 23 years, but we haven't grown that much. And this is a tremendous opportunity for us to grow. And maybe my fellow councillors around the table may or may not know this, the the town of Grand Bay Westfield's line uh, border with the city of St. John used to be much further towards the city of St. John. It got moved. Yeah. The building that I work in, in the Workers' Rehab Center, uh, is actually in the town of Grand Bay Westfield. Uh, sorry, in the city of St. John. But uh, had it been uh, happened 50 or 60 years ago, it would have been in the town of Grand Bay back then. And there's something called a community of interest. And it's really, we must be the only town in the country that has a, a grocery store where you buy your, your meat. Um, items uh, in one aisle, you're in the town of Grand Bay Westfield, and if you buy your milk and other items, you're in the city of St. John. So we really don't have, in our town of Grand Bay Westfield, our own grocery store. So this presents that opportunity as well. And I'd like to suggest to you that there's more of a community of interest with our colleagues who live next to us in Kettebeck, Belmont, Morna, the former names, St. John now. Um, I used to go to the to the KBM with, with uh, her son back uh, many years ago when playing baseball, and also later uh, soccer in, in the soccer field here in Grand Bay. And the people who would uh, be playing would be the same people, uh, but they lived in, in Martinon. So we have that community of interest. So financial reasons aside, it's a way to grow our town. One way to grow our town, uh, population-wise, which we need because if we stay stagnant for another 15 years at zero population growth, we will be a target 
for consumption uh, through a forced amalgamation with a larger entity. We have to be strong, and this is one way that we can become stronger and, uh, uh, and larger. So I think that that's the direction that we should uh, be considering this as an opportunity as well for looking at um, the, uh, the opportunity we have in front of us. Thank you, Councillor Balcom. That, that makes a lot of sense. There definitely is a, a, a culture of connection between Grand Bay Westfield and, and those areas of which you speak. You know, my, a lot of my children have played basketball with those kids and, you know, um, they used to come into River Valley School and they went to school together. So that does make a lot of sense. One thing we do have to watch out for though, is we have to make sure that, you know, we are assigned specific areas that they are population dense and that, uh, you know, the the tax base that to, that may be assigned to us can support the infrastructure that we're going to be required to maintain. Councillor McIntosh-Lawrence. No, I agree with Councillor Day and Councillor Balcom. I, I know people are a bit leery of change and reform, but it's coming regardless of what anyone wants so our, our the best thing we can do is to be prepared and have the best interest of Grand Bay Westfield. Yes. I think that's putting together some sort of submission as Debbie yes. was saying, Councilor Goffin was saying, this shows we are open to this. This is something that yeah. I think it's not if we close off and say no change, no change, then we're going to be stuck getting whatever comes to us. But if we show we're open and give these ideas, then we it's all better for us. Councilor Bailman. Oh, you're good. Oh, wait, you captured your. Oh, you turned yourself off there. That's, that's great. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add on this? I know this is not going to be the first or the last time that we have this discussion, but I'm thankful that we were able to have it in front of the citizens of, of Grand Bay Westfield. And, and, uh, it's like I said before, it's going to be one of the, uh, one of the big, uh, challenges and opportunities of our, of our mandate. So, uh, we want to make sure that we represent everyone's interests the best way we can. John, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, the only thought that occurred to me as I was listening was that people often think, you know, mankind's greatest invention was the electric light bulb or the wheel or something like that. I would make a difference say the greatest invention that mankind's ever had is the community, it's the city, it's people living together, it's the people thriving together. And I think you know, any type of chaos that reform presents presents a wonderful opportunity to everybody. And how do we create it? How do we accept it to be able to build on this invention that we're just but you know temporary stewards of? Yeah. And you know, if we can go forward that way, uh, that is fantastic. Uh, and uh, you know, I share a lot of said uh, Joseph Bellicott's uh, perspective in the sense of you know, how do we ensure that we're a strong community that can maintain itself and sustain itself? And I think that's been one of the driving factors. And also, I'd like to further suggest that I think that we have to step beyond just the municipality and look at what do we need to help transform this province from a half out province to a half province. And that the type of local reform that occurs has to include those adjustments to ensure that we can make that transition. Thank you, John. Was that Margaret Mead who said that about the community? No. Uh, well, she may have, but that's not where I read it. I actually read it. The author was um, Ben Johnson. Ben Wilson. Ben Sorry, Ben Wilson. Yeah, I thought uh, she had said something similar about. That's not a good quote. Yeah. <laughs> <Good answer. laughs> okay. Uh, so do we need a motion to accept the administrative report? Um, no. No. Uh, is there any direction for just receive it? Uh, yeah, just receive it. But is there any direction? I really haven't okay. received. So I guess uh, to accept your administrative report to receive and file. Um, and I think I made notes here. We'd like some uh, to direct staff to uh, yes. put our thoughts to prepare to the uh, a report to come back to us. I haven't really heard about what you want me to put in here. It's like we don't want to be amalgamated. We're interested in subsidiarity in the sense mm -hmm. of, well, 
were open to amalgamation with uh, the urban parts of LSDs and uh, the part of St. John that is immediately uh, south of Grand Bay Westfield. I haven't really heard a lot more about that. I don't know that I've heard enough to be able to do more than what I've already done, except right. maybe take it through here, toss out a couple, keep some, and throw them in subsidiary and regionalization. Is that fair? Or? I'd like to know, um, and I don't know if it's part of the report, but what kind of additional costs would be by doing this would be an impact on the town? And maybe there is nothing because their tax rates would then cover the costs of the services provided? Um, well, I'll give you some examples of expected costs that the town may incur if we were to grow larger. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently planning a works garage um, for our current needs. However, um, that may be insufficient if we have to take, you know, for responsible for a larger area. Uh, what happens with municipal, you know, when we do a review of the operations and we decide we want to bring stuff in house? Uh, if we're providing services there, we're going to need more of the staff up front uh, to do that. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, if you look at, you know, sort of how it is that we know that we know, uh, there's more known unknowns, I think, than unknown unknowns, if I could put it that way. Right. So we got some degree of certainty, but not a whole lot. So in terms of the report that I'm looking at now, um, we discussed um, the sub subsidiarity, um, you know, where the town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas south of the town and West St. John River, such as Martinong, Kedepec, and Morna. The town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas east of the Narapis March, including the Britain Road, Campbell Road, Woodman's Point, and perhaps a little further east along Highway 102. The town of Grand Bay Westfield should be enlarged to include those areas east of the ferry landing that are within the urban dense settlement. And then there's the regionalization component, which is uh, the two components of enfranchising residents of LSDs. Increased regionalization in which urban municipalities participate based on the services provided by the regional entity that would be based on the current regional service models. And the outcomes are expected to address three issues, the democratic governance of rural and remote places, coordination of planning and infrastructure in larger urban areas, and the devolution of provincial administrative administration services. And, uh, you know, there's a note there that says that the cost of reform is unknown, but the cost of the status quo is the potential for continued stagnation. So, in, in, for, you know, from, from what I have read and my experience and, uh, and the reports that, that I have gone through, I'm, I'm in favor of including all of these as recommendations to the provincial government um, in terms of where we want to go and, you know, letting the government know what our potential direction is uh, with respect to municipal reform. These are all, these are all things that, uh, I think will address a lot of the issues that we have in terms of population growth, stagnation, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, economic development. Um, so, uh, with uh, the uh, Minister Allen still having consultation meetings, would it there be of any benefit of him meeting with us again? I always think there's benefit for council meeting the minister. However, based on what the well, like you know of his schedule, I don't know how realistic that is, but if the council would like I've extended an invitation on behalf of council, uh, I can't say that we'll be able to accept it. That, that's up to the minister's office, but I'm more than happy to extend an invitation. And I would suggest if he is unable to meet with us, that he might meet with, you know, like Zoom. You worship and, and you don't um, with the changes that we're proposing um, so that it gets right in front of the minister. And I'd also suggest uh, letting our MLA know some of the changes too that we're recommending 
so that he's brought up to speed and doesn't get blindsided. I would just like Councilor Bill. Um, one of my colleagues sat in on me and watched John Taylor to present to the working community in Fredericton. Uh, John Taylor did an effective job in his presentation, so Fredericton's already aware of some of the uh, contents of the report, um, so that's not an issue uh, that we're in agreement with them. It would definitely be new um, in Fredericton. Can I just clarify? Um, subsidiary and regionalization, are they two separate schools of thought or do they go hand in hand? No, they're two separate. Yeah, right. So we're asking um, the Professor Taylor and the other Taylor to come and present to us on the 28th. Uh, my correspondence, one of them will be available. Okay. Maybe two, but definitely one. Mm -hmm. the, the, as of this afternoon, uh, there was no commitment as to which one would be. Okay. Okay. So, uh, John, um, are we providing you with enough direction to move forward, or do you need something um, further? Yeah, if you don't mind, you and I chat about this a little bit further. Okay. Um, and then we should be good. Yeah, okay, that's good. Because, like, I'm fairly. I'm fairly clear on where I think we should go with this, um, but I'm not sure that the rest of council. So why don't we talk about craft something, and then we'll circulate it and get input as to what in the world were you smoking when you listened to us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So from a procedural point of view, um, I've got a motion here that, uh, uh, with respect to the report and. Uh, yeah, and then just direct the administration to come back with kind of a summary of what the uh, council would like to send to the minister. Plus, an uh, invitation to the minister. So, the full time direction is a Okay. All right. So, can I have a, a motion on that? So moved. The second there. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Okay, the motion is carried, and I would like to thank. Uh, Council and staff and, and anyone watching to, uh, to just thank you for bearing with us through this discussion and uh, and like I said it, it won't be the last so uh, your item now is 16 correspondence YMCA stronger community um, for oh, oh, sorry, did I miss one? Yes. Oh, I did miss 157. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I'm doing this. <laughs> Item 15.7, code red. I make a motion that the Council of Granby Westfield authorize administration to transfer provision of emergency alerting to code red provided by Unsolved. Thank so. you, Councillor Day. I have a second. Okay. Councillor Bailman, thank you. Um, any discussion or questions on this motion? Um, I was really excited when I read that because Sentinel has been an issue. Um, there's been issues with it over the years in the EMO, and it doesn't necessarily do sometimes what we would like it to do. I do have a question, and I'm going to, who do I direct it to? Direct it to you and then go to the fire chief. <laughs> um, I'm registered already with Sentinel, and by going to Code Red, do those that are already registered have to re-register? My understanding is yes. Yeah, John, can you? Uh, yeah, I'm turning over to the chief shortly. Um, but yes, uh, that database has, has really changed over time. Mm -hmm. So there may be uh, contact information that's stale. And really, we want something that's fresh. Uh, Code Red is a little bit more expensive, but. Um, you know, it's a superior product. I'll let the, the chief yes. elaborate a little bit more on it. Uh, so, yeah, the it's harder to run on the superiority side of it. And the, the base advantage that it does have is it's, it covers a lot more platforms uh, than our current system. And it also covers the non emergency type of messaging. So, you know, there's a number of things, whether it be like a recreation type of thing, if people want to sign up for circle alerts, when 
certain events are happening or when a public notice is posted on the website, we can create all kinds of those types of, uh, of messaging for people that they can sign up for. Um, however, the main goal here is on the emergency alerting side, side of things. Uh, in reference to the, the signing up, it's not that it's not possible to have the data moved over, um, but as Sierra pointed out, it's you know this the system has been in place for 12 years, um, and in that time, very few people have logged back in to make any form of updates. So although we have close to a thousand subscribers, I would not be surprised to find that less than 500 of those contacts are actually accurate or up to date. The best thing is, and because this is also has the option of being an app based, so those who have it on their phone uh, may choose just simply be notified right through the app rather than getting phone calls and texts or um, the other format. So. I have another question that I didn't have until Jimmy Dooley, um, our sergeant, our CMP officer. If, for example, we had another situation like they had. Would we be able to send her the code red alert as to the fact we have a missing person in our community? Yes. Okay. So then if she needed help or she needed to communicate with our residents, we could actually do it with that code red. Yeah, so it would be similar to the national and provincial um, emergency alert system that they have, which actually has the ability to go through radio and television as well. Um, that would be strictly at the request. So if the RCMP um, did put a request to to, to our EMO um, or to the town in general for the for master system, there'd be no reason that we did not have a request. Okay. Good. Do we have any other questions or discussions on the item? I just have a really quick one, but I, I do I thought it was a great product like, like information provided, but is there any there's no financial implication to terminating the old agreement? Is no, there's not. Okay. I had a quick question, Troy. With with the, the new system, is it uh, like five year contract year to year or it is year to year? It's year to year. Yes. Okay. So there's and there's no um, penalty if we don't like it after a year to to drop out of that contract. Or no. like that. Okay, that's great. It looked like a great product to me. I know during the floods, if we had had that, it would have been amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, that, that's one of the biggest advantages that I see with it is when we have a very specific event such as the flooding. Yeah. People can sign up for alerts just for that. Whereas in the current system, when that flooding first happened, the entire community received the alert, um, which 90% were not affected by this emergency. So this will allow us to really narrow down and just start with those who need the information. Yeah, and I love the operational side of it too, the ability to, you know, to communicate when, you know, things are open and things are closed and, you know, skate parks closed for, you know, resurfacing or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, it, it looks, based on everything I read, it looks like a really great product. So that's awesome. Okay, do we have any more questions or discussion on the item? Uh, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Okay, your motion is carried. Thank you. Um, item 16, correspondence. YMCA Stronger Communities. We have a motion. I'd like to move, Your Worship, that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield authorize a donation of $1,000 to the Strong Communities Campaign. Second. Any um, questions or discussions on the item? I just want to highlight that this is a program that I, that I know local children have, uh, have benefited from. So so I'm very pleased that uh, the council has decided to support this donation. Um, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Contrary minded? Your motion 16 is carried. Item 17, correspondence, SCADA system upgrades. I'd like to make a motion that we take Okay, wastewater SCADA system upgrade project number 203796, uh, certificate number one for the balance of $25,641. We have a second. Thank you, Councillor Falcon. Do we have any discussion 
or questions on the item? Okay. Uh, John, would you be able to uh, talk? Sorry, I'll do some background. So, Deputy Mayor Tool, yeah. do you have a question? I'm uh, John, you have a bit of background on this item. So was, okay. For, Smoke the status. Yeah. So the Scott, uh, Bruce will correct me if I'm wrong, and I will turn it over to him. It's a remote sensing uh, information system to allow us to be able to monitor our um, sanitary sewer stuff from a distance. Um, so some of that had to be upgraded. We had a new computer installed. I forgot everything, but I'll turn it over to Bruce before I say too much. Of time. <laughs> no, that, that was a great there, John. Uh, yes, yeah, so I guess our, our, our SCADA system uh, was originally installed in 2004 under an in infrastructure program, so it's old technology uh, and it's been breaking down. And again, with the desktop that it had, it needed to, it needed to be uh, upgraded to a modern one, Windows 10 and, and all, all that. But along with that is also reporting from all of our list spaces and driver spaces. So it communicates back to the, the, the main office and then if there's a problem, it sends us out, you know, text alerts to our phone, and then we're able to go down and take preventive action before it becomes a problem. So, uh, and again, just a little bit of a quick example on that, and uh, on our, our dual station, we have two pumps, so when one pump goes down, we know one's down, but it's meant that, that the other one is still operating. So that gives us time to go and fix that one before that goes through. And also, it uh, alerts us when there's an actual overflow, which needs to be reported to the Department of the Environment, but we have our float set below the actual overflow. So when they get the alarm, it gives us time to go down and fix it, hopefully, before it actually hits the overflow we need to report. So. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Um, some of the problems can be fixed remotely at one o'clock in the morning from the operator's bed. Other ones, as the first commissioner said, require actual manual adjustments. Right. That's, that's pretty. Slick technology right from the bed, you know, right from your phone. So, and I assume that this prevents higher dollar value repairs from having to be made in some cases. It, it, it does in some cases on repairs, uh, but the, the big impact, and again, is the reporting of the environment because, again, if something fails, uh, it's an environmental impact. Yes. So, we want to not have that. So, yes. we want to make sure the system is up and operating at all times and avoid any environmental effects. Thank you. Do we have any, any other questions on the item? There being none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Your item 17 is carried. Item 18, correspondence from the Lieutenant Governor. Motion to receive you, Bob. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we got uh, two seconders. I'm not sure who was first. I think it was Deputy Mayor Tool this time. Um, I would just like to highlight that, uh, that the uh, Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick, uh, Brenda Murphy, is uh, a Grand Bay Westfield resident, temporarily residing in Fredericton during her appointment, and he used to sit around his horseshoe herself as, as a counselor. So, so this you know particular letter, I think, holds a lot of meaning here for for all of us over and above the you know the initial honor of having uh, having a letter like that addressed. To all of us. So, Brandon Murphy's wise words of wisdom at her last council meeting. What she learned so much here was that when she thought something was a really good idea, that there would be some in the community who would not agree. So, take our splash pad, and we have people out there who don't have kids wondered why we spend the money on that. So uh, you, you will find, you'll get phone calls, and not everyone will be happy with our decisions. But you have to go forward. Well, that's some, some wise advice from our Lieutenant Governor that I will take to heart, and I suggest all of us do as we move down this path together. We have any other comments on the on the item? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Your item is carried. 
Item 19, Introduction to Strategic Planning. And I know everyone in this room is aware that we went through a strategic planning session as a council and a leadership team last week. Um, we spent uh, two evenings together going through shared vision, priorities, directions, uh, key results that we're hoping to see, vision, values, all of that. And um, our CAO, John Enswind, is going to uh, do a presentation and introduction to strategic plan so we can share some of what we're doing with you. John? Can you put the show version on there? Yeah, great. Um, thanks. Strategic plan is just the beginning of the beginning. Um, it's an ongoing thing as we've discussed that it's something we'll review annually and it's definitely part of the budget process. Uh, the agenda. And I'm going to fly through this because we're going to hit the two hour mark shortly and I'm sure people's attention span is fading. Uh, we'll just talk a bit about growth strategy. That's been a, a dominant discussion through the campaign and tonight. Talk about the elements and content, content of the strategic plan. Uh, just, you know, how it's important to understand the area of Westfield, what are the roles of council administration, what are objectives, and how does, how does implementation look like? And uh, normally I talk about the Wright brothers. Why are they successful? And uh, I'll just sum it up quickly that the reasons that they're the first ones to fly is because they included themselves, as you tell by the picture, in the design of the plane. Otto Lilenthal was a, gen a German gentleman who uh, was, uh, you know, very promising. And in his last flight, he didn't survive. And the reason is that he had this great looking device but he didn't factor in how he sat in the machine. In a strategic plan, we try to take in the lift, the power, and the overall design of everything. So what does a growth strategy look like? It's really, it's defined as a gradual, deliberate development of the community. Uh, with the municipal government contribution, this being defined according to factors within the municipality's control. So really what we want to do with a growth strategy is how are we going to grow and what are we going to allocate or invest in that that we can control? And when you look at growth readiness, really you have three key points. You need council administration working together. You need strap planning and development that includes the uh, municipal plan. Uh, we need to understand the demographics and economic trends. And then also we need all our resources aligned. Do we have the right people? Uh, and do we have the right resources? And these are questions that we need to ask. And uh, it's important that we have all of these. If we don't, it's very difficult to move forward effectively. Now, there's different things we need to consider if we want to grow. You know, does administration have the capacity? What are demographics and economic trends telling us? So, for example, Stats Can did a report in 2019, which had three different forecasts for growth. Um, and some of them included, well, most of them included the fact that the funded region would be uh, losing about 7,500 people. You know, so we need to be aware of these things. What's our fiscal health? We've discussed the fiscal fertility of the town and the province. Land use planning and governance. Uh, that's something that you know we're doing. We have a new plan we're implementing. And we've been working together as a group, leadership and council, for what is good governance about. Our infrastructure, we've discussed our needs there. Uh, we've discussed education, you know, we've discussed health, public safety, partnerships, and what are our municipal services look like. So those are some of the things that we need to be aware of as we move forward. And you know, the mayor already talked about what some of the elements of the of the strap plan are. The vision, the mission, the values. And I think the mayor used in her opening remarks, the Northern Star, and uh, what type of community are we going to be? The mission, really, why is it that the town of Grand Bay exists? You know, um, sometimes it's basic, sometimes it's a little bit more complex. And then the values, what are the guiding principles that will establish the culture which the mayor has spoken about this evening? You know, council leadership, we need to understand and, uh, what that is about. How will, the town, how will the council lead themselves? Uh, what's administration's purpose? And we kind of uh, outline that. And what are the objectives that council wants us to implement? 
So, you know, these are just uh, an example of vision, but, uh, and this is nowhere near what we're actually going to be doing, but this the vision of the town, the idea of growing small town and tribal field. That is an example of a vision state. Uh, it's not the one that we have, but it's just an example of something that we need. And uh, my own bias council is when we have long vision statements that are a paragraph long, um, they're typically written by the committee and they're not remembered. Need some short, pithy. Uh, I like to aim for seven to ten words. Uh, you know, mission and purpose. You know, really, we want to deliver services effectively and efficiently. What we need to understand is what services are we going to be delivering? Because right now, uh, there's not a whole lot that we deliver. For example, we don't deliver a whole lot around recreation programming. That's done through the River Valley Community Center Foundation. What are values? These are some of the things that we talked about. You know, um, how do we ensure that when we work with others or when we work with people outside the town or even here in our little group um, that we work with one another? Priorities. You know, here's some of the priorities that we've discussed. Um, population growth and financial sustainability. You know, we've heard a little bit about that tonight. Uh, organizational capacity. Do we have the resources to be able to do what council wants? Infrastructure sustainability and climate adaptation. Um, it's important that we have a lagoon, but we also important that we have a lagoon that won't wash out into the river in the event of a more than 150 year flood. See how they survive to about 100 year flood. And then finally, community vitality, which isn't on the list here, um, but how is it that people in our community from cradle to grave? can have an opportunity for our fulfillment. And so just some things about understanding the Grand Bay Westville. We need to understand the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, challenges. What's the environment that we're working under? And what are some strategic risks? And I said to the council, I'm rushing through. Stick up your hand if you have a question. And if I don't see you, um, the mayor will kindly interject. Okay. <laughs> Any questions so far? Oh, okay. Okay. So these are just examples of strengths. You know, these are things that um, might be applied here. You know, we have a cottage field, we have regional facility collaboration there too. But it's important that we at least document all of these things that we have. Uh, and we have more. You know, we have Blueberry Hill Trail, Makanova. You know, the airport access, geopark designation, and Harding's point. I'm still missing some of that on my slide. What are weaknesses? You know, and if you see something highlighted, that's also a strength. You know, we have flooding in certain areas of town. We don't have anywhere for guests to stay. My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, we don't even have a BAB, an Airbnb here. Um, Sorry, I'm getting a funny look from somebody. Oh, I, I think you have uh, an Airbnb. Airbnb, I think. There might be one or two. There might be. But, but no, 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 um, alternative housing, one of the things we've talked about is the fact that about 92, 93 percent of our housing is uh, single dwelling. Uh, you know, how do we work on it? We have a golf course that's uh, sort of a hidden jewel for the gateway you can see through River Valley Drive. You know, I live out by the flashing lights. I see convoys of bicycles, motorcycles, uh, vintage cars, and people just out for a, for a, a leisurely drive. What are the challenges? Corporate capacity, uh, we have one main street, you know, both an opportunity and a challenge in our proximity to St. John. You know, why is there so much development in Chris Pan and Ross State as an example? The environmental standard, the one I use is what's called a PESL, and the short form for uh, political, economic, uh, sociological, technological, legal, and environment as in nature environment. Okay. So political, you know, city of St. John, of St. John has more fun than us. 
Um, and uh, on economic, excuse me, uh, we belong to the Division of St. John Regional Health Agency as an investor. Social, you know, uh, there's housing issues. You know, we, we like to be a hub. Uh, you know, we are a multi generational community, but we lose the top end of the get, uh, demographic. And we're a small province. Technological, we have fiber optics here. And there's nuclear power in the region. And you know, this is important. St. John has a set smart city ranking. And that's a discussion, discussion sorry, for another day about the yeah, smart city, smart community. And we're nowhere near that. So. Uh, legal. Whoops, sorry. Legal. Um, you know, what about enforcement? What are the legislative challenges or restrictions that we work on? Uh, there are some. Pending legislative changes, uh, you know, how are municipalities organized? That's a big one. Uh, environmental, changing legislation, downloading of uh, enforcement and compliance, and uh, sewage. What are we dealing with? How are we dealing with that? Now, I'm going to do the next four slides in injustice by going through them, but I want to let Council know that these things uh, will be a part of the budget discussion that we do uh, once September comes around. These are questions that we all need to know the answer and understand what exactly are the strategic risks. Um, so, you know, is the town prepared to quickly and effectively resume operations? In the event of a serious incident, accident, disaster, emergency. You know, thankfully, the town has two years of practice. Or okay, hold the pots in the right? Um, yeah, you know, on the downside, substantial risk. Can we adequately diversify its revenue source? Our revenue sources? No, not really. You know, maybe we should. You know, yeah, I'll leave that joke. Um, but anyways, there's four uh, pages here. Um, that, you know, when we do do our budget deliberations, we need to ask ourselves, are we making the right investments? Uh, I know one question that has come up, um, do we consider the total cost of asset ownership when making investment decisions? It isn't just about the capital or the sexy spend. It's easy to raise money for a new facility. You know, the unsexy part is, how do we maintain and operate it for 40 years? You know? Uh, uh, and again, there's more. Uh, are we investing enough money in our facilities? And you know what? The thing is, it's not just Grand Bay Muscular that goes through all these things. It's municipalities across the country, and I would argue around the world that have to ask these questions. You know, tonight, Council had a session on uh, cybersecurity. Are we adequately protecting information created by or entrusted to us? You know, and uh, we're, we're we're working towards that. We're still going to be doing more enhancements in the future. But these are the types of questions that, you know, even before we talk about numbers, we need to be aware uh, as a team about whether or not we're doing these things. Because these may drive some of the investment that we make. Now, what are the roles? And are there any questions on strategic risk? I didn't go through it in detail, I just highlighted them, but I have. They're not a fun conversation to have because you know we have to be sober and realistic about it. Yeah, like you said, it's not it's not the sexy spend, but uh, it's important to address them and be aware of them in the first place. Well, yes, that's what we need to ask them. Right? Uh, so, what does council leadership look like? And uh, I've broken it down to about six parts, and council thinks that's inadequate or too much. But we know tonight, so we make sure we understand our roles clearly. Uh, you know, council determines the vision, you set the budget, you determine the bylaws, which can help us implement the budget. Uh, you're linked between residents and us. You know, some people will think, well, you know, it's easy to phone the council bell come up and complain to him about the block wall instead of phoning uh, Heather up at the front desk and Heather takes a message and says, all right, I'll let Bruce know. Bruce writes a work order and then it's done within you know, what kind of priority would that be, Bruce, for a pocket? It would be it would be high on the list. It would be high on the list. So we can cut out the middle name and be a cast of Alcom who's got caught at work and just phone here, phone us, and we can get on it and make a work order to address it. Uh, intergovernmental relations, 
I think the mayor's already been asked this at one or two ministers this evening. Yes. And, uh, that's your job. It is. That's council's job. Uh, and the leadership team is there to support you. And then policies. Uh, council has the vision. We need bylaws, budget. Uh, we need that whole list to be able to accomplish council's vision. Otherwise, it becomes very challenging to do that. Did you want that to be larger, like to miss anything? Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. No, I don't think it should be shorter. I, I can't think of anything right off that uh, that you've missed, sure. but it's always okay. possible. I do like the community relations. Yes. I think we all experience this: people coming to us and asking us questions. For example, what you said is we need to take advantage of excellent staff across town, and the town can answer a lot of these questions. And, so kind of coming to us and going back and forth with like the Facebook page, other things, maybe letting people know how to reach staff and how to do that. So, yeah. yeah. Just contact Heather at the front office. It'll get done. It'll, It'll get done. done. Yeah. You know, exactly. and no offense to council, let's cut out the middle person. No offense to okay. <laughs> Now, what's administration's role? Uh, really, you know, we're here to help ensure that council is successful in turning the municipality is. So we want to work to align the operating capital budget uh, with council's priorities according to this track plan. And that's what we've been doing, that's what we did last week, uh, trying to establish what those are. We support, advise, and assist council's very deliberations through timely apolitical and information advice. Hopefully we did that this evening. Um, and uh, we implement the budget bylaws and policies of council and you hold us to account if we go over budget or if we're not enforcing a bylaw, or we skip over a policy, uh, or, you know, for example, you know, for, why are we bringing a 5200 to order fix to council, right? Uh, so, yeah, so if you hold us accountable for that stuff and say, hey, have you guys thought of uh, upping it, or we may be coming back to you and say, you know what, we have a gap in the tree policy. Uh, you know, what are we going to do about that? You know, and ask for uh, direction. Uh, our goal is to deliver the right services at the right level that's fiscally responsible. Uh, we want to contain costs by demonstrating the value of taxpayer investment. Uh, we want to advance the council's strategic plan. We want to sustainably maintain the town's infrastructure, enhance our quality of life, and facilitate the economic success of our residents and businesses. You know, a lot of this stuff, you know, infrastructure, you know, that's something that you know, people in Grand Bay aren't able to flush the car that's going to done their job. You know, unless there's a 150 year flood. In which we still may not have done our job because that's a very rhino. A very rhino is something that you see on the horizon charging towards you and you have time to act. Well, maybe we should start acting about a burn or something like that. And that's the council decision, not a job decision. Right. Okay. Um, you know, and we support and again with a political information advice. At the end of the day, if everybody thinks we belong to your personal political party, awesome. Okay, or if everybody's mad at me because they think I belong to everybody else's personal political party, awesome. Okay. Now, what's the role of strategic plan? So, the municipal plan is ten years. Council's vision should be about. You know, if, if we do a good job, the next council will be able to use our council to a larger degree. Okay? And uh, that's what we were aiming to do. There's less certainty in doing the vision, and we've discussed that. Um, the strategy that we're going to do is what can we do during this council term? And there are some things that may not be able to happen. Uh, for example, um, you know, the school. Uh, we can lobby for it, we can get contracts signed. But maybe that's not something that is uh, shoved on the ground until the year of the following council. But you know what? You've done all the legwork and stuff like that. And then tactics, and these are things that are more certain that we can do. We'll be doing that as part of the strategic plan for approval for council. That's what you're going to measure us on. Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do the other? And then that's how you can tell if your leadership team is effective or not. And you know, one of the things we discussed uh, during the orientation, it's a bit of a dance between the leadership team and council in the sense that, you know, council does most of the vision setting, but we're here to support you. The same thing with mission and policy, and, you know, policy is shared. You know, when it comes down to the day-to-day, -day, as the deputy mayor said, 
um, you know, she's glad that we're having the community link, um, but you know, sometimes it's easier just to hold this. So people prefer to talk to the deputy mayor because she'll get things done. And she will, because she'll say, phone John, or she'll say, I'll phone John, and she'll phone me, and then I'll phone Gary, and Gary will make sure that one of the students gets it done. But, you know, things will get done. Okay? And then objectives. You know, what are we hoping to achieve during this term? And uh, those are things that we're still defining. And what does implementation look like? You know, and it's pretty simple. Um, you know, what I developed for the old council was a work plan for the year. And, uh, you know, when they did my probationary uh, assessment, uh, they said, yeah, John, you get this stuff up. Uh, and that's something that I'll be submitting to council, and that's based on the strategic plan and on the budget that we do for the following year. And then in turn, uh, the leadership team is slowly learning how to develop these things. You know, I provide the leadership team with mandate letters. Here's things that, here are expectations that we have. Uh, council, what the, the mandate letters that have been provided, you see that some of them are cultural and some of them are more task oriented. So they're a little bit of both. Uh, reports. Um, well, really, how are we doing with the uh, capital projects? You know, how do we know that they're on track? How do we know that they're not on budget? And then, of course, performance evaluations. And I can say, John, you know, I really slacked off on this area. Um, why didn't the plan get done here? And then we may say, well, you know what, if you remember, uh, we budgeted 100,000 for it, but it came in at 175. That's the example. Or you say, well, I think it was important. You know, didn't do it. Well, she would say, that's not, <laughs> you do not do that. Right? Um, so that's it. You know, basically a half hour presentation in about 15, I think. Uh, sorry about that. And I just want to end by saying that this is just the end of the beginning when you strategic planning. You know, the rest of your term is implementing it, holding your leadership team accountable for, come on, why can't you go faster? Or slow down. Or, you know, actually, I think. This isn't working. We have to go back to revisit it. All those things are possible. And that's the importance of the strategic plan. It ensures that we're all growing in the same direction. And the other thing I just want to, uh, want, I want to add for, um, uh, for council is that strategic plan changes the dynamic of the discussion around the council table. You know, instead of, um, you know, it creates a culture where everybody knows we're going to the same place. The discussion is, is this the best road or not? Instead of people wondering if we're going in the same direction, that wondering, that wondering casts doubt. That doubt creates a lack of trust. But if everybody knows where we're going, we have the trust that, yeah, we're all going to the same place. What's the best way to get It's a completely different dynamic. It's a great one to get part of. Thank you, John. That was an excellent presentation. Um, I know that we've all been in the process ourselves for the last week or so, but um, anybody watching at home wasn't there with us. So if you do have any questions that popped into your mind that uh, that might, you know, um, be of interest to anyone watching, John? Um, once we do get a draft strategic plan report, we let it public that's a good point. Yeah. So it's it's uh, there's going to be a con public consultation process through all of this. Um, this is a quick question, John. Are are these slides going to be? Are they able to be posted on the website for anyone to, to see? Or is that? I can if you want. Okay. Just just in case it's a pretty comprehensive report. I, I sure. think it would be of interest to people if, uh, if it's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I'll make it Put it on your, your list that's already this long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one more, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. All right. Um, any more discussion on the strategic plan process? I, I know that I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, having this roadmap is just crucial for us to get where we want to go. It helps us, like John said, develop teamwork. It, it you know, it gives us focus. It puts a sharp point in that sphere. So, you know, that uh, we're not all over the place. It allows us to to focus on what we need, not be distracted by, you know, exciting things that might be off in the distance, but aren't part of where we need to go. So, um, 
And uh, I'd like to thank previous council for allotting the money for our strategic process. Um, it was it's really important for for our term in the next four years and beyond because you know we're not just looking at our term we're we're looking at you know the next decade and, and further ahead. So, and I'd encourage um, any of the councils or any of the community. Um, to go look at Burlington, Ontario's strategic plan. It's well thought out, it's well developed, and yeah, I'd love to have one for 40 years, but I think just starting off having one for four years is a start. But it's a good way to see that we're not the only ones doing this, and we have a lot that we can take from some of these strategic plan so we're not reinventing the wheel. Right. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Day. So um, before we move to item 20, I just want to um, thank everyone for being here and uh, supporting each other during you know the first full council meeting of this new Marin Council. I want to thank the leadership team for, for being here as well. I'm really thrilled to have you here to answer all of our questions. I know there were a lot, but we're new. And uh, and uh, having you here and giving us the information that we need was, was really great. Thank you to John and, and Nicole for everything that you've uh, done to support us to get to this point and uh, getting us through this meeting. Of course, for dinner, that was great too. Um, and uh, I'm really excited for the future. I think we had a great dynamic around here, around the table here tonight. A lot of questions, a lot of discussions, a lot of back and forth. And I think that goes well for the next four years. So I just want to say thank you. And I'm really happy to be here with all of you. So our, our item number 20 is adjournment. They have a motion. So moved. All right, may I have a second? Second, seconded by Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? No. All right. Your motion is carried. And your worship? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.